Um, yeah, this is a um, this is a ten minute extract from a one man show. Oh, bless you. Um, from a a, ten, a a one man show I did a few years ago and have done ever since called High Viz, which is about a character called Quint, who is a traffic warden who finds himself the um, getting the unwelcome attention of a stalker with an air gun who keeps uh, shooting darts in the direction of his backside. Um, and he finds himself reluctantly being taken off frontline duty to teach traffic wardenry to a bunch of new recruits. And um, this bit here is from the second scene where he finds himself for the first time actually having to do this stuff that he doesn't want to do. So yeah, um see two of my bits. Thank you. Right, number three, business unit management. What's that then? Any ideas? No, no me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You know what? Kills me this. No offense, but it does. Me stuck in here, Keith out there on my turf, on my rounds, you know, I'm a, I, said, I said to Mr. Ampleby, I said, look, I'm fine, I'm fully fitted, we're only a little dreams. He says, no, I want you off the streets. Why? I said, it's not a quaint thing, it's a warden thing. Well, so far, he says, you're the only warden he's gone for twice now, and this time he's tasted blood, the blood of your backside. True, I said. <laughs> ah, here we go. Business unit management. To contribute to the business unit, its development and its service delivery aims. <laughs> no, none the wiser. <laughs> Man, what it probably amounts to, because you know, most things do. One word. Loyalty. Loyalty. Fraser Tooley Parking admit you to their family. You get a, a good wage, a bonus scheme, a, a free costume, free gym, free what? Man, the costume, the, 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 the uniform, it's not strictly free, but the cost, it's like siphoned off by degrees from your wages. So at least if you do have to pay for Man, I don't see why you should pay to go out to do battle in service of the planet. I mean, that's the spin, right? You know, the ecology. You, so, so why should... But, you know, let's not fret. As my old mum used to say, Quint, focus on the good things. Of course, she didn't call me Quint. You know, she never would. I said to her mum, call me Quint. Everyone's calling me Quint after that fella in Jaws. I've got them calling me Quint. <laughs> she said, no, I don't like it. I named you Kevin, and Kevin's who you are. I said, no, it's Queen. She said, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. She'll have decked him, though. She'd have smashed her to the canvas. Muhammad Ali, what's my name? What's my name? Joke! Joke! I mean, I wouldn't do that to a woman. I mean it. Never have. Not even the wife. No, no, no. Not even when I found out about her in that RSN. But yeah, I never mind that now. We, uh... <laughs> Yeah, what it was, see, like, we were posted, right, in Germany, posted to this army base, munching glad back, right? <laughs> so we're going out to these pottery classes, right? Never did I see a single pot. No, I tell a lie, she brought on an ashtray. Uh, about a month in, one time, she comes over with this little, little, uh, little dish. She said, look, it's a press dish. That's the way it were. You, you could see where she pressed. You could see a thumb print under the glaze. Could have used it in evidence, court of law, you know, Colombo, all that. I guess that's not what I said to her, I just said, it's bloody awful, you want to give up? <laughs> I realise, looking back, that's exactly what she did. Only according to the kitchen calendar, she was still potting for months after. Three nights a week. Three nights a week, I was having to stay in and look after the lit one. Well, you'd have it with my social life, you know, the discos, the through lines, all that. Right, where was I? <laughs> loyalty, huh? Loyalty, the rich 
richest jewel in any treasury. Loyalty to your employer, to the good citizens who pay your wages, above all, to your colleagues, your, your family. You all maybe laugh, sneer a bit when I say that, but I tell you, if you could walk a foot in my shoes, I have been so touched. I make a big deal, a dart in the bum, so what? But I tell you, for all this bluff exterior, the love of my colleagues, they're telling me to leave. That's how much they care. <laughs> they could have out job ads. They're sending me links on the internet. They're saying, wait, it's not worth it, just go. <laughs> Family, right? Family. Ah, right, you know, it's a load of nonsense. Confined to base, what they do? <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's alright, it's just a, a nap bite, that's all. Mind, uh, a nap bite, because you don't have to go to hospital, rot in A&E for two hours, and have some smug-faced doctor doing five minutes what you could have done yourself. You know, I could have whipped it out on my own, given a bit of time. Time? That's what I didn't have. There's me, right? Richmond Villas, down, but not out. I'm not even thinking about the dart, I'm just trying to spy out the sniper's nest. Next thing I know, bloody ambulance comes screeching around the corner. Aye, some nosy bastard peering out from behind the cheese. They're taking it upon themselves. You know what? I bet it with that bloody sniper. Aye, I bet it with him, called that ambulance. Aye, you know what a mug I am? No, I wouldn't, you know, insult them. Well, I couldn't, could I? I couldn't refuse to go. Not when them lads had, had made all that effort. And they were real nice, I've got to say, real, real cheerful, you know, laughing with her all the way to the hospital. <sighs> More than I can say for that snob of a doctor. You know what? He never said a word to me the whole time. Even that nurse, it was like, uh, it was like I'd stumbled into some fancy boutique, intruded on their conversation. Yeah. Do you ever see that TV show, The Wire? Yeah? Well, so is he. Five times thus far. It's that dude he just keeps on watching. Ooh, The Wire, The Wire, it's amazing. He couldn't believe the nurse had never seen it. I'll, I'll lend it here, he Series one, I'll bring it in tomorrow. Get a bloody move on, I thought. They'll be sending Keith out again on my round. No, on and on he goes, The Wire, The Wire. And it's only when he's done. When he's whipped out the dart, stuck in a couple of stitches, that the great man deigns to speak to the patient, to the fellow paying his wages, he comes round, real ostentatious, presents me with the dart. There we are, Mr. McBride, what a lot of fuss over nothing. Nothing. For being shot. Good citizens being shot, he calls it nothing. It's par for the course. You know, I walked the geese last night, having a pint with my mate Squirrel. I mean, he's a good lad, he's Squirrel, he's, but he's a peculiar sense of humour. He says, Quint, have you heard the shooting traffic wardens? <laughs> heard, <laughs> eh? Heard? <laughs> of course I've heard. He says, no, 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 but, but listen, the law, the law, they're looking for 60,000 people to help them with their inquiries. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said, 60,000? That's well nigh the old town. I know he says it's a joke. Joke? He said it's no joke, it's a fucking farce. Picked up my phone, went outside, got right onto that copper girl, uh, PC Law, the black one, you know. She gave me a number to call. I said, what's going on? 60,000 people? She says, who is this? It's Quint, I said, with the air darts. But what's the time? She says, it must be nearly midnight. Never mind the time, I said. What are you doing? 60,000 people. You've got to narrow it down. She said, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realised, Squirrel, your man Squirrel, he was joking. Like he said, he was literally joking. I mean, most amusing, highly appropriate. But see, that's what we're up against. That's the attitude. A prophet is never famous in his own town. Thank you. <laughs>